CDL General Knowledge Exam Practice Study Questions and Answers Part 2 Hi, I'm Barry Branton. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Would you please subscribe to my channel? I would really appreciate that so very much. And if you would do that, would you please also enable notifications so you can be updated on newly released videos. This channel exists for you. You're the reason why I made this video. Thanks for watching. Let's get started studying our material. Question number 26. To transport cargo safely, which of these are you not responsible for? So in this question, you're searching for the option which relates to non-responsibility. What is non-responsibility? Non-responsibility, essentially assuring the freshness of sealed cargo. In other words, what you're not responsible for is the correct answer. So, to analyze this question, you need to find out what you're not responsible for. So, your options are, which you would say you're responsible for, is you're responsible for recognizing possible overloads. You're responsible for inspecting the cargo and you're responsible for making sure the cargo is properly secured. Um, so you're not responsible for the state of sealed cargo, nor can you inspect it. You are only responsible for the safety of the cargo, ensuring that it is balanced, secured, and not overloaded, and does not get in the way of emergency equipment. Question 27. A BC fire extinguisher is not intended to be used on which of the following types of fire? So we're looking for the one that it is not intended to be used on. Well, the correct answer is wood. So a B and C fire extinguisher can be used on grease fire, electrical fire, gasoline fire, and wood fire. So what you need to do is um, acquaint yourself with the different types of fire extinguishers. Now analyze what type of fire that a B C extinguisher is intended to be used on. Okay, um, you cannot use an, a BC extinguisher on a wood fire. Um, a wood fire, uh, water would be the best thing probably to put that out. Um, explanation, a BC fire extinguisher is not f for use on anything that you can normally use regular water on, which includes wood paper, and cloth. These require a ABC fire extinguisher or just an A fire extinguisher. Okay, now so we have the a breakdown on the different types of fire extinguishers here. We have A which is for trash, wood, paper. Fire extinguishers with class A rating are effective against fires involving paper, wood, textiles and plastics. The primary chemical used to fight these fires is monoaluminum phosphate. Because of its ability to smother fires in these types of materials. I'm not so sure about using water on plastic, my personal opinion, um, but I suppose you could do it. Um, but for a wood fire, uh, I would definitely suggest water. Now the next class is um, B, which is for liquids. 
Fire extinguishers with a Class B rating are effective against flammable liquid fires. These can be fires where cooking liquids, oil, gasoline, kerosene, or paint have become ignited. Two commonly used chemicals are effective in fighting these types of fires. Monoammonium phosphate. Well, that's what it is. A mono ammonium. I think I said, might have said monoaluminum, but if I did, I apologize. It's monoammonium phosphate. While sodium bicarbonate includes a chemical reaction which extinguishes the fire, sodium bicarbonate is um, baking soda. Okay, and lastly we have cl uh, Class C, electrical equipment. Fire extinguishers with a Class C rating are suitable for fires in live electrical equipment. Both monoammonium phosphate and sodium bicarbonate are commonly used to fight this type of fire because of their non-conductive properties. Okay, I think that's it on the uh, explanation. Let's take a look at the next question. Question number 28. How many seconds does it take for a normal tractor trailer to clear a double track? The correct answer is more than 15 seconds. The explanation is you can expect it to take more than 15 seconds for a regular tractor trailer to clear a double track and 14 seconds to be safely over a single or to be over a single track. Okay. Number 29, an anti-lock braking system will, correct answer, keep your brakes from locking up when you brake hard. And the explanation is, ABS only really kicks in to save you from over braking and will not change the way you normally brake. It doesn't stop you from needing to engage in careful braking and defensive driving and is no substitution for good brakes and maintenance. It will, however, save you from having your brakes lock and getting in an accident. Question number 30. Why is it important to use a helper when backing? Correct answer is because you have blind spots. The explanation, using a helper when you are backing up is important since you will be dealing with blind spots that you are completely unable to see. Before you start, work out a hand signal for go, for stop, and go. But your most important one is stop, okay? Question 31. Always try to back toward the driver's side because... Correct answer. You can see better watching the vehicle rear out of the side window. The explanation is you should always back toward the driver's side because you will be able to see things much more easily. For example, you can keep an eye on the vehicle's rear by viewing it out of your side window. If your truck pulls toward either direction, it needs service. Your next comfort should not affect your safety decision. Pardon me. Okay, question number 32. How can you determine if your vehicle is equipped with ABS? Now, in this particular situation, all the answers are correct. So let's go over each one. Check if your vehicle was manufactured after March 1st, 1998. They are required to have a panel light. Second option. Check for yellow ABS malfunction lamps on the instrument panel. And final option, look for wheel speed sensor wires that are coming from the wheel 
the pardon me, from the rear of your brakes. And again, all these are correct. The explanation is most vehicles now will have a light on the instrument panel that will illuminate briefly when the vehicle is started to alert you about the ABS but you can always check for wires from your brakes. Question 33. The definition of hazard is and the correct answer is a road user or road condition that could be a possible danger. And the explanation is a hazard is something that could go wrong but it won't if you've been vigilant. Question 34. Starting the engine and inspecting the cab involves each of these tasks except so here you're looking for the exception. So, well, what does it involve? Well, it involves checking the transmission controls. It involves checking the air pressure gauge. It involves starting the engine, then listening for unusual noises. Okay, but the question is asking for the exception. So the correct answer is what it doesn't involve. It doesn't involve starting the engine, then pulling, uh, pardon me, starting the engine, then putting the gear shift in neutral. So now with respect to this question only, this is not the answer that you're looking for. You're looking for the not answer. So this is sort of like a trick question. Um, instead of asking what you should do, they're asking you basically what you shouldn't do. And here's an explanation. Please note that the question contains an accept clause. When performing this part of the inspection, however, you must put the gear shift in neutral, then start the engine and listen for any unusual noises. Once you perform the engine check, you will check all of your gauges and controls, such as the air pressure gauge and transmission controls. Question number 35. Which of the following statements about retarders is correct? Well, in this particular question, all of the answers are correct. So let's go over each one. The first option is retarders help slow a vehicle, reducing the need for using your brakes. Section, the second option is you should turn the retarders, retarders off whenever the road is wet, icy, or snow covered. And option number three, when you drive wheels, pardon me, when your drive wheels have poor traction, the retarders may cause them to skid. Again, all the answers are correct. So let's go to the explanation. While retarders can help reduce the need for your brakes, they can make it more likely for you to skid in inclement weather or whether your wheels experience poor traction or pardon me or whenever your wheels experience poor traction I apologize uh, because of this you should always turn off your retarders in poor weather question number 36 what is the best way to figure out how many seconds of following distance you have? The correct answer is wait until a vehicle passes a shadow or a landmark then count the seconds until you pass. We have an explanation which says count how long it takes for you to reach the landmark after the car in front of you by counting like so 1001 1002 and you will have your following distance in seconds all other methods are dangerous and will get you a true following distance and probably will not give you a true following distance remember following distance needs to be increased in traffic bad weather for heavy vehicles or at higher speeds Question number 37. You don't want 
to be a distracted driver. So you, and the correct answer is, turn off your cell phone until you reach your destination. And we have an explanation. Tasks that make you a distracted driver always make you distracted. Whether you think it's an easy portion of your trip or, or a straight section of road, do not eat, drink, smoke, text, read, or have a difficult conversation while driving. In an ideal situation, turn off your phone and keep it off until you are, dr uh, until you are done driving for the day. Question number 38. Which of these is the most important thing to remember about emergency brakes? And the correct answer is, if the wheels are skidding, you cannot control the vehicle. Question number 39. The parking brake should be tested while the vehicle is, and the correct answer is, moving slowly. Question number 40. Which of these statements about tires and hot weather driving are true? The correct answer is, you should inspect your tires more often. Question number 41. What factors determine a person's blood alcohol content? And the correct answer in this particular question is all of the above. So let's look at the options. The first option is how much alcohol you drink. Option number two, how fast you drink. And the third option is how much you weigh. Question number 42. Hazardous material placards are and the correct answer is all of the above. So let's look at the correct options that we have. Hazardous material placards are placed on the front, rear, and both sides of the vehicle. Second option, 10 and 3 quarters inches square. And the third option, turned upright on a point in a diamond shape. All of these are correct. Question number 43. True or false? When fighting an engine compartment fire, it is best to lift the hood in order to target the fire's base. The correct answer is false. Lifting the hood would permit more oxygen to feed the fire, hence you'd have more of a fire. So leave the hood down and possibly uh, and so lifting it up you could burn yourself so be carry be very careful and um, let's get to the next question question number 44 what are the three rules for using your turn signals the correct answer is one signal early two signal continuously and three make sure the signal turns off after the turn is completed. Question number 45. When you are on top of a hill and know you will be going down a steep grade, which statement is true? And the correct answer in this particular case is always downshift to a gear lower than you came up the hill before starting down the grade. Question number 46. Which of these requires a greater stopping distance? And the correct answer is an empty vehicle. Question number 47. When inspecting the parts of a braking system, you should pay special attention to the following. And the correct answer is all of the above. So let's go over the options. Cracked brake drums. You should pay attention to that. Brake shoes with oil, grease, or fluid on the shoes. You should pay attention to that. 
Broken, missing, damaged, or heavily worn shoes. You should pay attention to that. So all the above answers are correct. Question number 48. When caring for someone who is injured, you should, and in this particular uh, uh, question, all of the answers are correct. So let's go over the options. Option number one, only move them if they are in danger from fire or traffic. Option number two, apply direct pressure to any wounds. And option number three, keep the injured person warm. So all of the above are correct. Question number 49. For an average driver driving 55 miles per hour on a dry pavement, in order to bring the vehicle to a stop, it will take about, and the correct answer is, the length of a football field. Question number 50. You are driving a 40-foot vehicle at 45 miles per hour. Driving conditions are ideal. Dry pavement, good visibility. The least amount of space that you should keep in front of your vehicle to be safe is the distance you would travel in, and the correct answer is five seconds. Thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Would you please smash the like button for me? I would really appreciate that too. I really value your questions and comments. Please let me know how you're doing. Please stay tuned for my video recommendations.